We're Trent and Allie, and after taking our freshly renovated tiny home on her maiden voyage, we were confronted with some unexpected furry friends. We're being invaded! There's freaking mouse poop everywhere. He probably brought his friends. He was like, yo! Don't! I can smell food! Come with me! Uh. Next thing you know, there's 10 mice in here just... Ah, and you're gonna open this and be like, let's have some cookies. Ah! For some reason, Trent doesn't seem to be bothered by this. We share an affinity for butter cookies. <laughs> but I'm ready to do whatever it takes to keep us mouse free. It's, uh, it's American Ninja Warrior mouse edition. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since we need to move our trailer up to our property soon to continue construction. Oh man, the stress and the anxiety is growing. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Because any day now, we'll be introducing some new faces on the farm. I think she's got three, three babies in there at least, but it's possible that she could have four. So come along today as we get to work. Basically, we're gonna be sealing up Terry like Fort Knox. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have weird sleepwalking issues or night terrors, but Trent does all the time. We haven't had a a big one in a while probably, but last night Trent woke up in the middle of the night and ran outside and I woke up like what's going on and he came back inside and I was like what's going on and he said my sunglasses fell and I had to go get them. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys ever have anything like this where you wake up and something that was happening in your dream feels like it was actually happening. Well, basically, by the back window in my dream, <laughs> my socks and my sunglasses fell out of the window. And so when I woke up, I was like, oh, I got to go get my sunglasses <laughs> and my socks. So in my boxers, I run outside, I open the door, I go around by the window and I look and there's just grass. There's nothing out there. And so I was like, oh, OK, that's this. I was dreaming. So then I came back inside and, of course, Allie is like, what were you doing out there? And I was like, I was getting my sunglasses. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning to a very stressful text message. Capital One sent me a message that said, there's been some suspicious activity on your card. So I call and the lady says, oh, did you make this charge for zero dollars and zero cents in China? And I was like, no. She was like, okay. That looks like it's probably fraud then. Sometimes they do this to test. And then she said, oh wait, the charges are coming through right now. And she's like, did you make this charge for $696? And I was like, no. And she's like, okay, let me, this is fraud. Let me take care of this. So it's not a huge deal. They're gonna send me a card. It's gonna have a different number. Now today we are going to be doing some Nice preparation for getting Terry up to the property. We got our septic system inspected. However, there is still a pretty big problem. I had a terrible day yesterday. I had to go to the dentist. I spent probably four hours in the chair. I hate the dentist. So we didn't get to make it up to the property, but there was a bunch of progress that was made yesterday. There's no way I could negotiate or convince my wife to let me not go to the dentist, even though there was some really cool things that happened. Today we're gonna be heading up there. And what are we gonna be doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Allie's in the dark. <laughs> the moral of the story though, is when you're in your teenage years, just brush your teeth every single day and then you don't have to spend four hours at the dentist when you're older. I would say it's much more crucial in your 20s to continue <laughs> brushing your teeth. I tried, but you know, I was lazy and now I paid the price. And I'll probably pay the price for the rest of my life. And right now, the price really hurts. We just pulled up and we were expecting everybody to be here and work to be getting done and the excavator was just leaving in his dump truck to go get another load of gravel because where our driveway meets the dirt road, it's code and they won't actually inspect our concrete foundation unless there's a gravel approach, which this makes sense if the road is paved, but our road is dirt. So for a dirt road to meet a gravel road where it used to be a dirt road, 
is just kind of silly, but it's code. So we have to have that gravel. He's already done one load. He went back to get a second load. Let's go take a look around and see what's been done. So as most of you guys know, where we're at right now is about 8,000 feet where our house is. And down at my grandparents' house, it's only 4,500 feet of elevation. Utah's going through a heat wave right now, but as we get up here, it's only like 75 degrees. Feels great. I cannot wait until Terry is up here and we can have a nice, brisk, cold evening and the breeze coming in from outside will just be nice and chilly and you can have a big blanket. I'm gonna remind you about saying this when it's negative 20 degrees and <laughs> 10 feet of snow and you be like, I just wanted it to be cold. I'm like, I'm really <laughs> expecting it to be in the negatives, but our neighbor the other day said it, it stays around like nine degrees in the winter time. So we'll see what happens. Excavation is almost done and our drainage system is in place. Once the footings are dug for concrete, we'll be one step closer to taking over this project and finishing the rest ourselves. I think they got some of the footings dug for structure number two. We're gonna come up here. Oh yeah, baby. That's insane. So basically structure number two is gonna be at ground level but this huge, giant, wide ditch is where they pour the footing for the actual slab. And it looks so big because you need to excavate past the border of the actual structure. After it all gets poured with concrete and slab, it gets backfilled. So it looks huge right now. <laughs> it's not gonna be this big. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't really know that when you dig down, you set a footing that's wider than the actual footprint of the building, and then you need extra space beyond the footing to set up the forms, so. It all gets covered up with dirt afterwards, Basically, but it looks big in the beginning. The hole looks enormous compared <laughs> to how it's actually going to look. The last few loads of gravel are almost in place, and last week the septic system was fully installed. Or so we thought. That tank is supposed to be exactly level, and the inlet hole is about three inches higher than the outlet hole. So hypothetically, when the water comes in and the water level raises, it comes out this outlet hole first and never actually backs up the inlet because it's raised up a little bit higher. Now, when we're looking at the water level, it's still got a bit of a negative slope on it. This could cause a lot of problems in the winter with freezing, and we don't want anything in the septic system which is everything you flush down the toilet, to start backing up, up the inlet pipe and potentially freezing. Stuck between a rock and a hard place is the way I'd like to put it. This is just part of the learning process of how to build something on your own with multiple other people and lots of moving parts. We're kind of playing with emotions here, honestly, because we love the people we're working with. We want to treat them well. We appreciate everything that they are doing for us and they're not done. So if we make a big stink about this, about something that might be a problem in a few years, how will that affect the rest of the work that they have to do over the course of the next few weeks when we're under a timeline to get stuff done quickly so that we can take over and start framing? And I know the right answer is make the contractor fix it and do it right. But the guy that's putting in the septic system is the same guy that's putting in the retaining wall. He's the same guy that's doing the backfill. He's doing our road. He's doing all the excavation work. So if we make a huge stink about this and we like upset him, he might do a crappy job on the rest of the stuff. I hope we get this sorted out. Hello? Mike the plumber? I have a plumbing related question for you. Okay. Um, I told you about that house that I'm gonna try and build in the mountains. Yep. The excavator's up here and he put in our septic tank and okay. he did the leach fields and it passed inspection from the health department, but it's like on a backwards angle to the point where water comes out of the inlet before it comes out of the outlet when you fill it up. Is that gonna like be a problem in yeah. five years? Well, it should be, it'll be a problem right now. Yeah. So like, if I just leave it right now, like I understand drain lines from back when I did drain cleaning. And if, yeah. if I connected a pipe and ran it to the house, the inlet would constantly have like two inches of water in it because by the time the outlet stops draining, there's still that much water in the inlet pipe. Yeah, he needs, he needs to bring it up and re-level it. In my eyes, this is going to create a problem. 
Yeah, nothing but problems for the next life, all well, life of the house. Yeah. And there'll be no way to fix it because it's the tank that's in on. <laughs> well, I appreciate your help. I think uh, he's just pulling up in his dump truck right now, so I'm gonna go talk to him and try to figure out something. <laughs> Well, I guess there's a couple ways you could fix this problem. You could uh, empty all the water out of the tank, lift it up, maybe take it out of the hole, reset the bed so that it has a nice level place to sit, make sure it has a positive drain, or our excavator's solution to the problem is to take a concrete core hole to drill a hole that that pipe is gonna fit in out of the actual tank concrete the old hole back up and raise the drain pipe up about three inches that should work that should be fine i hope he ends up doing that by the time we bury this thing back up but the moral is it's always a good thing to talk it out to communicate to address the issue up front um he was super nice about it he totally he knows that it's a problem too and we were able to really easily come to a solution so i feel much better at least that we addressed it with him and thanks to Mike the Plumber, my friend, for helping me answer some questions. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith. A step away from the comfort zone and be a little brave. So take a look around you, how far can you see? How far do you think you can run standing on your knees? Well guys, good morning. It's actually been a day since we saw you last. We came down from the property, we loaded up Terry, threw him on the back of the truck, and headed back down to my mom's house. As most of you probably saw a video or two ago, we were infested by mice in the middle of the night because we parked in a field. We cleaned up like 40 little pieces of mouse poop, which means there was probably 7,000 mice having a little dance party all throughout Terry in the middle of the night. And that gives Allie the heebie-jeebies, and I'm just not exactly comfortable with having these little buggers run around inside Terry. Well, guess what? Our property has probably got tons of mice, which means there are little entry points somewhere in Terry and today we're going to be trying to close all of those little ports of entry. Basically we're going to be sealing up Terry like Fort Knox. Breakfast turned out surprisingly well, happy about that. And now we're heading to the hardware store because we have to do some mouse proofing today. What's the likelihood we can seal up holes against mice and earwigs at the same time? I don't know, man. The earwigs are probably a harder, a much more worthy adversary <laughs> than the mice. Screens. We got spray foam. I wish there was like some easy stuff to do first before I have to like get on my back and just like lay in the dry grass. There is. What? I can put screen in all of the vents. What vents? I'm so paranoid. Trent keeps telling me that this is a completely useless solution, but I am so paranoid that mice are coming in through the holes in the vents here, here, over in between his legs. It's a totally valid argument. It's just 
Putting screen here is not stopping them from getting in the trailer. It's stopping them from getting in the living space. They would still, they would be able to get into the trailer, but I don't even care. I don't want them in the living space. So we're gonna seal up as much as we can around the envelope of the trailer, but I want like multiple checks in place so that if they break through, Layer number one, they're not breaking through layer number two, you know? Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to put screen on the vents because if they're in that tube, that tube is made of like thin plastic. Okay. So to put like a screen in front of them so that they can't go through it, they'll just chew through the, the thin plastic. We'll make it electric. An electric screen. Go. We forgot the electric <laughs> module. The screen's electric. I knew we forgot something. But really, we just need to we need to button up the envelope. I'm not I'm not making extra barriers inside the trailer. It's American Ninja Warrior Mouse Edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we could like videotape them and watch them do crazy stuff. No, but... they're not coming in. Why? Why do you want to <laughs> hang out with the mice? We share an affinity for butter cookies. <laughs> I think really the first thing to do is to just get underneath and start shoving steel wool in the holes. I feel like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> okay. Oh, I found something that can help me not complain so much. <laughs> ah! Earwig! No! Look at him go! Alright. So I think this is the problem spot. Oh, there's a lot of problem spots actually. What? Really? Yeah. Great, Should they're easily under here sooner. Really? Oh, there's a lot of problem spots. You guys are now on the Trent personal cam under here in the, the depths of Terry. There is this black tarp. Between this tarp and the floor is some thick and heavy insulation. This is to keep the camper warm or at least to do as good a job as possible. It, it's not going to do that good of a job, but at least there's insulation and then it's sealed with this tarp all the way along here. Now, the first problem spot is right there. Do you see this? It's probably not a good thing to be touching. They probably pooped and peed in there. Ew. But I don't know if they'd like, they come along here, they climb up the little stabilizer jack, then they do a little shuffle across here, then they do like legit Tom Cruise Mission Impossible jump into that hole and then scurry their way up in there. It seems really strange to me that the hole would just be in the middle of the underside right here, but needless to say, they could be coming in right there or they could be going out right there. That might be the exit. They might rappel out of there with a little tiny string or something. You never know. There's a hole here. There's a hole here. And that is basically feeding the water heater and the furnace. So we're going to be steel wooling and spray foaming both of those holes. I guess I should do that before we move on, huh? I have other bad news. What? Come over here. What'd you do? I don't know if you can see that. Is that a wasp? That's a wasp nest. That's okay. Well, it's not ideal. Well, there's no wasps in there. At the moment. It's probably old. It's probably old. Okay. <laughs> Cold hand, frozen feet, raindrops falling on the street. I can't recall when I last saw the sun. All I can think about are earwigs now. Oh God. <laughs> Trent! <laughs> Summer's just a memory, a faded piece of history. No the Trent can shake. Ladies and gentlemen, get out of here. <laughs> Do a test piece. What's a test piece? Something that where if it falls, it doesn't ruin your clothing. Okay. Or get into your eyes. Whoa! It's more difficult than I'd like to admit. Oh, no. This is not a fun type of activity. This is a really helpful type of activity. Yeah. I mean, I probably have more fun watching you freak out about mice. These lazy days are never done. See all the droppings? Those are new? That? Yeah. Or did you clean that? Oh, I didn't make them. 
No, there are new from last time you were in here? I have no idea. I didn't clean it up last time. Why? I just put it back together. Trent. What? Why? Why would I clean it up? It's outside. I don't understand anything about you. All right, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but I'm basically a detective. And I have come to the conclusion that since there's not a single mouse dropping on this side of the compartment, anywhere, ever, there's never been any my, any mooses, mouses, mices, mices. There's never been any mice on this side of the compartment because there's not a single dropping at all. And this is actually sectioned off from the side where all of the poop is. And where all of the poop is, there's openings to under the bed, which is the same place that Allie cleaned out with the vacuum when I was doing the water heater. So I think mice had gotten into the camper van before and this was a nice little nook and cranny where they could hide. I don't believe that they're getting in from over here and this is actually sealed up really nice. So I'm gonna put this back on and we are not going to worry about this entry point because I don't think it's the culprit. I honestly think that one of those three holes that I already sealed up, I hate spray foam. Mm. Got it all over me and it's so sticky. A good idea to get underneath, make sure there's no other holes wherever there's any other wires or pipes or anything going in or down, going up or down through the insulation. I'm gonna go steel wool and spray foam, all of that. And then I think we're as mice proof as we're getting. We might not be earwig proof, but we're, we're mouse proof. So it looks like I'm not crazy. There were lots of opportunities for mice to get in the trailer. It is pretty hard to do all this in the heat of the day. We somehow always tell ourselves, let's start early so that it's not super hot when we're working outside. And inevitably, it's like three in the afternoon. It's 100 degrees. It's super hot. I would love to go take a quick break and grab some ice cream, maybe a little milkshake, cool ourselves off, wake up a little bit, maybe, uh, help Trent's mood, I don't know. Allie is also heavily addicted to ice cream. It's 100 degrees! Which is fine, I like ice cream too. All right, let's make a trip out of it. We'll go, we'll get propane, we'll get traps, and we'll get some ice cream. Woo! milkshake I've ever seen. This is the worst possible health food decision we could have made. I don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. Now that we've got the trailer completely mouse proofed, we went and we got traps, we got our chocolate milkshakes. We're gonna try to lure Eleanor in here so you guys can see how ultra mega pregnant she is. Good girl. Oh yes. That's good. That's so good. You're so pregnant. Good girl. What are you doing? You look like you have 12 babies inside you. <laughs> it's okay. Good girl. Hi. Yeah. Well, as you guys can see, Eleanor is about as wide as she is tall. I think she's got three three babies in there at least, but it's possible that she could have four. I think two. Yeah. Anyway, we've set up this separate stall over here so that Eleanor can go and have her babies in this little separate stall and she can kind of be away from the other goats. We're excited to welcome them. However, we're, we have no idea when they're coming. Her udders are starting to fill up with milk, so we think it's gonna be really soon, but it's just a mildly educated guess. Hopefully in a few episodes, we'll be able to show you guys some baby goats. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to show us by giving us a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure you pray for us that <laughs> our septic tank is going to be fixed and reset and everything is gonna go smoothly with that and that we don't have any more mice. <sighs> We're gonna enjoy our milkshakes and try to stay cool. It is a hot day. Yeah. Thank you again to Native for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Cold hand, frozen feet, raindrops falling on the street. I can't recall when I last saw the sun. 
Summer's just a memory, a faded piece of history. No one can remember all the fun.